building materials to understand the material properties of buildings the required strength details we have covered there are other strength parameters which we will discuss when we come to the analysis part now for just understanding the materials capability of standing various uh, external force and developing various stresses for that so yesterday's discussion will be helpful so the history of materials says that a stone from time immemorial from the stone age you have the stone age stone has been used as a versatile building material in so many ways the stone we get from the disintegration of rock the rock gives us different sizes of stones so we should classify the rock so stone is a basic building material used in a different stages of construction so we will devote some time to understand stone stone is from rock by the process known known as quarrying quarrying is the process by which you disintegrate the rock and get stone huge stone boulders stone pieces which are known as aggregates all those things or stone slabs we get quarrying is the process of extracting the stone from the rock we were having manual quarrying nowadays it is obsolete the mechanical quarrying you can use explosives explosives such as bentonite and you can explore the rock cleave cleavage planes of the rocks we disintegrate the rock from the parent rock and it will be exploded in pieces by which you get the stone the classification of stones stones from natural origin then they are called the natural stones if some partial intervention of human being takes place in making the stone then it is called a semi natural stone if a new stone is made by artificial means then it is called an artificial stone synthetic stones there is one classification according to their origin or according to their nature then there is geological classification of rocks but as per the geological character of the rock they are classified as igneous rock sedimentary rock metamorphic rock igneous rock sedimentary rock metamorphic rock igneous rocks are formed because of the eruption of volcanoes underneath the crust of the earth because of huge building up of pressure and temperature a fluid called magma will be formed magma when the pressure and the temperature <coughs> is built up to that extent by which they will come out of their crust as volcanoes eruption as lavas when this lava comes to the atmosphere after some time they get cooled 
they set it as huge masses and got cooled down they form as rocks so that rock which is formed in this manner is called igneous rocks one such example of an igneous rock is granite the stone i told you from the rock mountains all mountains are the ultimate result of the eruption of volcanoes rocks will be formed once volcanoes are erupted so granite is a typical example of igneous rocks next is the sedimentary rock sedimentary rock this is because of the physical weathering sometimes chemical weathering sometimes biological weathering for example when these stone pieces or pebbles flow along with water in rivers their surface characteristics change their parent quality doesn't change but their surface characteristics changes and you get a new material sedimentation they roll after some time when the velocity of flow is getting reduced they settle there during the process of settle they form as a mass and if that mass it is not because of the pressure and temperature it is because of the aberration aberration taking place scratching away taking place the surface removal takes place they they roll down and get settled where there is going to be a severe sinking or because of any blockage huge amount of these materials will get deposited on the shores of the river they are called sedimentary sandstone is an example of sedimentary rock sandstone limestone is an example of sedimentary rock limestone then the third is the metamorphic rocks the metamorphic rocks either the igneous rock or the sedimentary rock because of the chemical action or because of environmental alterations modifications because of reaction with some other chemicals or sometimes because of pressure and temperature additional pressure and temperature the igneous and sedimentary rocks or some other rock arbitrary rock from origin they get changed a new classification of rock unlike the igneous and sedimentary rock the property of the material parent material will go, totally get changed a, a metamorphism will take place that rock will not exhibit its original characteristics a new characteristics will be developed for that type of rock that type of rock is called the metamorphic rocks marble is an example of metamorphic marble so taj mahal is made of a metamorphic rock and qutub minar is made of a sedimentary rock laterite in kerala it is very common in the northern part of kerala is a sedimentary rock slate is a sedimentary rock but shale is a metamorphic rock shale so according to the geological classification you have three varieties of stones then according to the chemical compositions chemical classification of rocks chemical classification again three varieties you have siliceous rocks 
where the silica content will be dominant. Siliceous rocks. Sand. Sand, sandstone. Sand is a silica content. Quartz. Silica. So, siliceous rocks, where silica is predominant as the ingredient. Argillaceous rock, argillaceous rock, aluminum, clay. When the clay content is more, it is called argillaceous rock. Alumina content is more. Brick. Brick is a semi-natural material. Any ceramic material is argillaceous. China clay. Pose goods. Pose uh, pottery. Crucibles. Porcelain. Sorry. Porcelain. Then Calcareous rocks, calcium hydroxide, calcareous rocks, limestone is a calcareous rock. So, when the calcium content is predominant, then it is calcareous, and the alumina content is predominant, argillaceous. The silica is put on a silicious. That's a classification according to the chemical composition. So we have seen different types of stones along with this as granite, sandstone, brick, marble, slate. Let us take the granite stone we get from carbon. The stone will have high composition as a granite stone. Stone can resist very high. Compressive strength around 40 Newton per ounce strength. Some stones can carry 40 Newton per ounce strength. Rocks can be classified as granular. This granite is granular in nature. Grain sizes. Or granular. Shale and other things you have layered lamina, lamina. Like that also you can pass in the rocks. Then stone has got high crushing stone. So usually conventional buildings from traditional construction on from the inception of traditional constructions stone has been used as a foundation material big boulders big boulders larger sizes flat stones and block stones stones and block stones Using the flat stones and block stones, you make a stone masonry which is called random rubble masonry, RR masonry. When we come to the construction part, we will take that. So, rubble is nothing but these boulders. So, if you lay the mold as foundation in a random fashion, it is called random rubble. If you just address them properly and if you have definite longitudinal plates, 
In random level, may somebody you will not not have a longitudinal plane. But if you have a longitudinal plane, then it is called coarse rubble mason. So random rubble mason, you just interlock them uh, by different sizes borders. Then it is random rubble. If we layer them layer by layer, then it is called coarse rubble mason. If you do the process of dressing, shaping. The stones are made using manual carving or machine carving. It has definite length, width, and depth of thickness. And if you just lay them in coarse level masonry, then that facial uh, stone construction is called ashlar masonry. So you have random rebel masonry, uncoast rebel masonry. Post rebel masonry. Post rebel masonry, the stones need not be dressed, finished. But if you use the stones, finish the stones, and construct a masonry, it is called ashlar masonry. Thank you for your